Hi everyone, you're watching Love the Runner with. I'm Kirsten, and in this episode, I'm gonna be talking about Cross Hermitage. Cross Hermitage is one of the larger Appalachians in the Northern Rhone Valley, and it sits on the Eastern side of the Rhone River. They make both red and white wine here, red from Syrah and white wines from Marsan and Roussan grapes. Now this area also kind of hugs another Northern Appalachian called Hermitage, but the wines are very, very different in the sense that vineyards in Cross Hermitage are mostly planted on vast flat areas, whereas in Hermitage, they're all on a giant granite hill. Wines in Cross Hermitage are also um, not as rich in flavor or depth as those produced by its neighbor Hermitage. They typically are medium lightweight as well as fruity on the palate. They actually, the wines from here remind me a lot of those produced in St. Joseph in the sense that they tend to be lighter, they're fruitier on the palate, but there are also so many producers in this area that there is a wide range of quality. But you can find some absolutely stunning wines from Cross Hermitage at reasonable prices. Now I have five wines here, all from Cross Hermitage, one Cross Hermitage Blanc and four reds. So grab a glass and let's get tasty. So I've tasted through all five of these wines and we'll start with this one. This is the Cross Hermitage Blanc and it's 100% more sun. I found it to be pale straw in color and on the nose it was very very delicate. Delicate notes of honeysuckle as well as melon and some waxiness, creaminess, hint of oak and maybe a little more floral than fruity but um, it was all right. On the palate, I found it to be a little bit dull, very low in acidity, slightly floral notes, and some viscosity. On to wine number two. So this is a Syrah. Deep purple and ruby in color. On the nose, I found smoked meat, but also pancakes, bacon, maple syrup. It smelled just like teriyaki jer jerky, which I loved. Um, bell pepper very subtle baking spices on the nose. Now on the palate, found some plum tartness, maybe more acidity than tannin on here, and some cedar. Surprisingly light on the palate. I would say this is a good everyday wine. Now the third wine, this one right here, I discovered that it had heat damage. Now, when I opened the bottle, it smelled off. Now I wasn't quite sure what was off about it. So I took some notes, did some research, and I knew it wasn't corked because corked has, a corked wine has a very distinct smell. It smells like wet cardboard and it didn't smell like that. Um, but what I did smell was prunes and a lot of jamminess. It smelled just like red vines when you open them up. And it also tasted very sour and it just wasn't quite what I expected. Now, what I found was that this wine was suffering from heat damage after researching it. And I think Wine Folly explains it really, really well. So here's a direct quote from their website. Wine heat damage tastes unpleasantly sour and jammy, sort of like canned prunes. Heat can also compromise the seal of the bottle, leading to oxidation problems. Now, I order a lot of my wine online based on where I live. And this is the first time that I have ever experienced anything like this. So I reported it. Um, I wasn't able to get another bottle exactly like it, so I was given a credit for this particular website, and I actually used it for the next wine. So we'll go on to this one. I found this wine to be deep ruby in color, and it had notes of dark berries, cherries, and very soft smokiness, but also some damp ground or wet rock on the nose, and some thyme and pepper and eucalyptus in there. On the palate, I 
I felt like it tasted like cherry pie with a little bit of lemon. So some nice acidity and tannin and very easy to drink. Last but not least, wine number five, deep purple in color, beautiful color. On the nose, I found blackberries and other soft, delicate fruits, but some molasses as well as cotton candy, this kind of sweet and savoriness going on, mushrooms and bacon, um, a little bit of meatiness, but not super, super meaty or overwhelmingly smoky either. But I, on the palate, I found it to be more tart than fruity. Very smooth, balanced, and has kind of a buttery quality to it, which this wine I think is absolutely stunning. These two for me were the two standouts out of the five, and I would highly recommend either of these. So all in all, great representation of Cross Hermitage. I had a great time tasting, and hopefully you will join me for the next time. Thank you so much. Cheers.